A shocking video of a woman being sexually assaulted in the full glare of the public by motorcycle operators has angered Kenyan women and activists. The police initially launched a fierce crackdown on border border operators following a government multisectoral committee set up to overhaul the border border sector. Hi, I'm Esther Akelo Ogola, the women's affairs journalist with BBC News Africa, and in this video, I'll share with you what we know about the disturbing assault, how it has fueled widespread condemnation, and how it has reignited a long-standing debate in Kenya about treatment and protection of women. We begin with what we know about the incident itself. According to the police, on the 4th of March 2022, a female driver collided with and injured a motorcycle operator on Nairobi's Forest Road. The female driver was later identified as a Zimbabwean diplomat. Fearing the nearby border border riders who are known for attacking motorists, the driver unsuccessfully attempted to flee. From this moment, the video shows the woman in her car screaming and struggling to push away the men who are trying to undress her while groping her as well. And it gets worse. Other riders order that she be removed from the car and stripped naked. The woman was eventually rescued by nearby policemen. Following the incident, the police have arrested 16 motorbike operators believed to have taken part in the assault and several motorbikes impounded. The alleged ringleader of the attack who went on the run for several days after the police announced a manhunt for him was finally arrested along the Kenya-Tanzania border on the 14th of March. Initially, the police launched a crackdown, arresting over 200 motorbike operators for allegedly flouting rules. However, some operators say they were victims of circumstances due to the sexual assault incident. Since then, the crackdown has been replaced by a committee seeking to overhaul the entire border border sector. Now, remember I mentioned border border riders' reputation? Here's a little bit of context. They are widely used as a faster way to travel through Kenya's notorious traffic jams, hard to reach places, and for delivery services. A large portion of their customer base are, you guessed it, women. The operators are widely seen to be laws unto themselves, frequently flouting rules and ganging up intimidating motorists, even turning violent if they feel aggrieved. Many feel the government needs to do more in terms of regulation and accuse the police of not doing enough. Case and point, the sexual assault video. The police have been accused of reacting only after three days when the video went viral. Their response? They say they were aware of the incident and despite the victim being too traumatized to record a statement, they went into action and made initial arrests. Now this entire incident and the fact that the assault happened shortly before International Women's Day served as a reminder that women still do not feel safe in Kenya. For context, the lack of safety for Kenyan women in public spaces and transport has been problematic for years. In 2014, women's streets protests dubbed My Dress, My Choice were a response to weeks of women being violently stripped, robbed, and sexually assaulted in the streets and in public service vehicles by vehicle operators. The reason? The perpetrators say that women were indecently dressed. The assault stopped only after the protests and the government went after the perpetrators, revoking operating licenses for entire fleets of public service vehicles whose operators were found culpable of sexual assault. It took three years before a landmark ruling sentenced three men to life imprisonment in connection with one of the many assaults where they'd also recorded the incident and shared it on social media. But has sexual harassment of women in public spaces and transport stopped as a result? No. Many women continue to take to social media as a means of getting justice for assault in buses, taxis, and in the streets. But women and activists say these incidents point to a much wider problem in the society. Rape culture and toxic masculinity are among some of the reasons credited with the poor treatment of women in Kenya. Women have continued to call for tougher policies, stricter implementation of the law, and even economic repercussions to send a clear message that no forms of assault will be tolerated. Just shows you how impunity thrives where sexual violence is concerned. How many motorists passed by and did, did not do anything? In response to the video while making remarks during International Women's Day, Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta announced that the government will take a tougher stance against the motorbike transport sector. I have instructed the law enforcement officers to use the instruments within the law to punish these per perpetrators. And there should never be a repeat of what we saw, for this is a blight on the entire Kenyan society. 
Kenyans have welcomed the move, but they say it's not enough. They want justice in all its forms to be served and the motorcycle transport sector to be strictly regulated or scrapped off altogether.